Hey folks, it's that time again. It is time for another session of getting to know Dynatrace. My name is David Jones. Everyone calls me Jonesy because there's way too many Davids on this planet. And uh, today we have uh, Stephen. Stephen, I, I, I apologize. I'm going <laughs> to. I'm going to ter- I'm going to try it. Stephen Schley. Yeah, pretty Stephen? close. Stephen Schley. Yeah. Stephen Schley. There we go. So Stephen's going to be doing our demonstration today. But you know, as always, with getting to know Diana Trace, what makes these sessions so valuable and so fun are the questions that you ask us during the demonstrations. And as always with our getting to know Dynatrace sessions, what we're going to do is uh, we're going to start off with a couple of segments. And so let me first start by sharing my window here and getting into our presentation mode. Stephen, can you see my presentation? Not yet. There we go. There we go. Yay. All right. So. Getting to know Dynatrace always has a couple of special sessions, uh, segments that we get into before we get into the demonstration. And the first is, what's new? So it's been a number of weeks since the last time that uh, we chatted. And as always, with what's new at Dynatrace, where do you go to find out new information about Dynatrace? You go to our news site, you go to our blog site. And so, you know, if you go to our news site, actually, let me just sort of flip over there right now. And you can see here that we've got all sorts of great articles and great content that's come out in the past couple of weeks. Um, You know, there's a number of articles here that you can see that Jay Livens has put together about weighing microservices, talking about what are microservices and what are their benefits. So if you're if you're new to Dynatrace, if you're new to, say, refactoring factoring your applications to run inside of containers, you know, giving these articles a read is probably a great idea because, you know, understanding microservices really sort of gets at the heart of the whole digital transformation, how people are taking their old monolithic applications and refactoring them to run is microservices within containers. This is sort of a great preface to that. There's also some great articles about, you know, AI ops and observability. Uh, obviously, we're still super excited, and we're going to be excited about this for a long time to come, about that Gartner Magic Quadrant and where Dynatrace ended up uh, on this year's Gartner's Magic Quadrant, which, again, is into the upper right-hand side of that uh, leader's quadrant. So uh, super excited about that, more content about that and what that means for Dynatrace. I think for me, one of the things that I find really exciting on the news sites is when we start getting into the SaaS release notes. And I love this because, you know, with Dynatrace, every two weeks, there is new capabilities, new functionality that is being pushed out into our platform. We are a huge believer in innovation and we are a huge practitioner of devops ourselves so we you know we sort of talk the talk so to speak and and you know as such we're always putting new functionality new capabilities out into the platform and it's great because i went in you know just this week and i had a look inside of our demo instance and i was looking inside of uh dynatrace and sure enough there's new items that are showing up on the menu, new capabilities. And you can go into our release notes here and you can see all of the new capabilities that Dynatrace has added. Uh, so new things around log processing, uh, new visibilities for uh, you know looking at things at a host level, uh, new capabilities around ingesting logs, new service insights. There's all sorts of new capabilities that we're constantly adding. So I invite you to bookmark our release notes page to always be on top of all of the new stuff that we have and we're pushing out into the platform. So that's it for our what's new at Dynatrace segment. Let's go into the next segment before demonstration, which is did you know? So with this week's did you know session or segment, uh, did you know that Dynatrace actually provides a metric explorer? One of the great things about Dynatrace is that as we have uh, evolved Dynatrace over the years, as we've added new capabilities to ingest metrics into Dynatrace, we realized that we needed a way to be able to 
search these metrics and find these metrics and understand what these metrics really mean. And so we included a metrics explorer. And so when you are using Dynatrace and you're using the Dynatrace hub to connect it to you know, hundreds of different technologies. When we ingest metrics from those technologies, whether or not those metrics are coming from a Dynatrace agent, if it's coming from an extension, if it's coming from a connection to your hypervisor, a connection to your cloud platform, wherever that might be, we're going to be pulling those metrics into Dynatrace. And then there is a simple, easy metrics browser that allows you to go in very quickly, understand and search for a specific metric. And then when you find that metric, you can actually understand, you know, how is this metric being consumed? What are the different transformations? What are the different dimensions that are available? What's the unit that is actually measuring things in? And if you want to create a chart off of that metric, you can just click that button right there and boom, you've got that metric showing up in a chart for you. Now, Depending upon what your role is, if you're an application owner, having visibility into this is great for being able to very quickly pull out those metrics, those KPIs that are most important to you and putting them onto a dashboard. Now, if you're a developer, though, and maybe you're using some of these metrics to actually measure things and then based upon those measurements, you want to automate maybe some of your DevOps processes, maybe automate your CI, CD pipeline, create a quality gate with Dynatrace around these metrics, then this metric explorer is super important because it also gives you quick access to the API, um, You know what these metrics are gonna be called within our API. So if you're a developer who's programmatically using Dynatrace, you can very quickly within this metric browser, just go in, find the metric that's of interest to you, and you can get essentially what the key for that metric is, and then use that in calling our API, our metrics API to pull and you know pull the data from that specific metric, whatever it might be. So if you weren't aware of this, now you know, okay? So that's the whole point of did you know, is telling you different capabilities and features of Dynatrace that maybe you missed at some point. And the Metrics Explorer is just a perfect example of that. All right, so that ends our first opening segments, which is the what's new and the getting to know uh, it, or what's new with Dynatrace and the did you know segment. It is time for everyone's favorite part, the most important part, which is the demo. So I'm going to turn things over to Stephen and let me just stop sharing my screen here. Stephen, we're going to get you uh, starting to share uh, your screen. And folks, as I mentioned, what makes these sessions so valuable and so fun and informative are the questions you ask. So please feel free to ask questions. And as we go through, we'll we'll try to get to as many of those questions as possible. And with that, Stephen, hey, take it away, man. Will do. Thanks, Jonesy. Great intro, by the way. I love having the new features there. I was actually just looking through the release notes this week to put together a, a sort of presentation of all the new features we've had in the last six months. And I was I was kind of stunned myself to look at like everything that's there. It's just remarkable what we do uh, as a company. Um, so. Before we get into some of the nuts and bolts about Dynatrace, one of the things that's, that's really important to understand about Dynatrace is that it's a cohesive platform where we're looking at our entire environment. We're looking at applications, we're looking at services, we're looking at your infrastructure, we're looking at real users, we're having synthetic tests, and we're able to do this across your entire environment, whether you're on-prem or in multiple cloud providers or even on a mainframe. So here's an example of a dashboard that we put together here where we're looking at at application health, our requests on our applications, where our requests are coming from from around the world, our request counts and key details about the performance of different requests in the system, our infrastructure health, CPU utilization, services, third-party services we might be calling, those are all tracked with our, our APM peer paths, we can see our third-party services. And all this is available in a dashboard, and a lot of this does come from, as Jonesy pointed out, our metric explorer, we can put this in one place. But part of what, how we're doing this is, we're, this is an example of what we're calling our Smartscape. So Smartscape topology is where we're actually able to go in and take all the tracing that Dynatrace has and all of our rich contextual data and see all the relationships of our different services in the environment. Um, so when we deploy Dynatrace, we're actually getting this automatically. So we don't have to define any of these things. We're actually seeing the relationships here, what which services are calling into which services, and then also which processes hosts and actually data centers are supporting those services. We understand both the service relationships and the directionality of those relationships from our tracing, and then also the actual 
uh, physical relationships by doing process to process communication monitoring. And all this data here is an entity model that we can actually export to a CMDB in real time and have a complete map of all of the monitored entities, entities in your environment that's always up to date as you deploy. And so we, as we have growing complexity in our environments and we have more shifting pieces and more diverse ways to release code and have more diverse infrastructure, we're keeping up with all of that and able to have you keep track of that and then also incorporating that into the, really the most important part of Dynatrace and the heart of Dynatrace, which is problem detection. So we hey, have all hey, the data Steven. we showed. Yeah. Sorry, sorry. Can you just go back to the Smartscape for a second there? Yeah. Let's just talk about that because you mentioned something about the Smartscape and the fact that we can, uh, from the Smartscape, we can export this into something like a CMDB. So not a lot of people are aware of this, but if you went to say uh, the ServiceNow store or marketplace, there's actually a Dynatrace service graph connector. And what that effectively does is that takes this topology and you can use it to ingest all of this detail around these entities that Dynatrace has discovered. You can ingest that into ServiceNow and have it populate that ServiceNow CMDB. This is hugely impactful for a lot of organizations because now what happens is they always have a list of fresh CIs. This is not something that happens like a, a scan that you do like once a day or once a week uh, or once a month for that matter. This is a real time feed of these entities. So as you're spinning workloads up, Dynatrace is discovering those workloads, discovering the relationship across those workloads, and then using that service graph connector to push that information out into, C uh, into ServiceNow. So when you're in ServiceNow ITSM looking at a ticket, you're always going to be looking at fresh CIs that are associated with that ticket. I'm really glad that you mentioned that, Stephen, like that, that capability of uh, us pulling out this topology, it has real world sort of impact for those folks that are using Dynatrace and ServiceNow. Great, great point, man. <laughs> Sorry, I interrupted you. Go back to showing no, us uh, the problem. <laughs> well, I'm glad you mentioned that, though. And and one of the things that we'll see kind of as we walk through the demonstration here is that um, Dynatrace is really talking to your entire application lifecycle ecosystem. And you mentioned earlier, you know, using things like quality gates um, as we pull some of this data out and pushing this data into a CMDB and service now. And so with Dynatrace as the full stack comprehensive observability platform, we're able to do all of those things and support all these functions throughout the application lifecycle. And it's all data driven in real time. And it's very, very powerful. So part of what we're doing with all that relationship data and all of the context that we're understanding about those relationships, as well as the performance information, the infrastructure information, and the end user uh, performance is we're automatically detecting problems. So when you deploy Dynatrace, you don't have to go in and configure every alert for performance. You don't have to go in and tell it what normal is. You don't have to go in and tell it what the service relationships are. It's going to automatically understand these things as it watches the traffic in your environment, learns the behavior of your infrastructure and the behavior of your end users to understand what normal is, how to baseline it, and then also understand when it's anomalous. And it's going to automatically surface problems for you. So here is an example of our, our problem dashboard. We can see here we've had several detect problems in the last 24 hours. I'm going to click into one of these that's an end user degradation. Um, and end user degradations in the Dynatrace get the largest priority aside from end user outage. So because we're able to see the end user, we actually have end user affected applications. Dynatrace gives us a higher priority because we know that we have an impacted user. And we have a lot of really rich data here. And again, we don't configure any of this. Dynatrace is understanding all the relationships by, as, as we see over here, our, our Davis AI engine, we call our AI engine Davis. Um, it's analyzing almost 14,000 different monitored entities to understand everything that is impacting upstream and downstream of this particular user action degradation. And I can see I've got two affected applications, 10 affected services, and it's all actually coming from one affected piece of infrastructure. And I've got some really key pieces of information here to help me prioritize this problem. I know that I've got 847 affected users and almost 3 million affected service calls. And I've actually got two impacted applications. So I've got a shared service somewhere that is actually having, that, that is causing uh, upstream problems for two different applications. And that, again, because I've got that contextual awareness that we saw in the Smartscape, Dynatrace is able to map that for me. It's able to say two different applications are affected by one downstream service. And I can actually see details here about who is affected and why. Um, but a lot of the power here is not just detecting that problem, putting it together, but it's understanding the root cause. 
So over here on the right side of the screen, I've got my root cause of the problem, which is this shared service that these two applications use called Check Destination. And I've got a lot of information about Check Destination. I've, I've got, you know, I've got performance degradations on that, other metric anomalies around the host, but I've also got a deployment event. So Dynatrace isn't just bringing in metrics, it's also bringing in events into our system. Now, in this case, we're actually um, integrating with ServiceNow as our, our deployment engine to get the change, um, to get extra context about what build this was and who the owner is and who we can contact contact about any problems with it. But one of the really neat things about Dynatrace is because we're instrumenting at the process level, we'll actually detect change events with our monitor processes even without this integration. And I want to scroll down here a little bit um, and show towards the bottom of the screen what we call the visual resolution path. Um, now, before I joined Dynatrace, one of the things I did was I, I managed war rooms. Um, and I did a lot of uh, um, uh, you know executive communication, trying to explain what happened and why and what the timeline was. And one of the things I love about the problem card, and especially the visual resolution path, is that this essentially gives us a retrospective on one page. I know who was affected. I know how long the, app, the incident last. I know all the services that were affected. I know when and what the upstream and downstream effects were for every affected node in the system. And if I pause the top here, we'll see all the different items that went red in, in this visual resolution path, which is a sort of a condensed view of our smartscape just for this problem. So again, we're taking all those relationships that we've detected and all that real-time data we have about the communication going on to be able to give this analysis, again, the directionality of the data, not just correlating over time, but actually understanding how data is moving between our different components. And I have all these different anomalies that Dynatrace automatically detected because it's automatically baselining the performance of my environment. But because it's got the awareness and the knowledge to find the root cause, it's put these 66 events, which, you know, if we don't have something that is able to put all this together and, and use the contextual analysis to put everything together into one problem, these are 66 different Slack messages or 66 different emails or 66 different events that all have to be brought together and correlated to know that, that they're related. And there's a real risk when we don't have this automatically happening on a relationship basis, where if there's a 67th incident happening at the same time, either it's going to distract us from finding a real root cause, or it's a different problem that's not going to get troubleshot too much later just because it happened to be occurring at the same time. Because Dynatrace gives us that relationship awareness to know that these all these 66 events are all related, it's able to put it together in one problem. And what's really neat here is if I scroll down to the bottom, um, we'll see that I've actually got and it's a, uh, one of these events is CPU saturation on this host. We'll see it at the bottom here. Uh, but if I go back to the problem card, we didn't cite CPU saturation as the root cause here. We cited a deployment event. So we're recognizing that because there is a change on the system, that increased CPU is a symptom of something that is different about the code that we deployed, and not just the fact that we're running out of resources because of you know, regular increases in usage on our systems. So very, very powerful stuff to be able to bring all that data together and really increase our mean time to identification and also get us a lot of time back from out of retrospective. So we don't have to sit down and go back through, you know, 5,000, you know, change log records and put together timelines and everything else. Dynatrace is doing that for us. So it's really helping us find problems faster by automatically baselining doing root cause analysis faster and getting us better mean time to resolution because we know exactly where the root cause is. And then also saving us time on the back end because we know exactly how things unfolded and we can give then give feedback directly to our development infrastructure teams on where we can make improvements and add items to our backlogs to prevent this from happening in the future. So it's really, again, helping in that entire application lifecycle and saving us time across the board. Hey, uh, hold on a second, Stephen. We got like a, we're piling up on some of the questions. Here, and, and, <laughs> Sorry, you know, I had a lot of talking. No, 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 take a breath. Great. <laughs> Absolutely. Take a breath. Take a breath for a second. All right. Um, yeah, listen, uh, Adrian, a great question. You know, how long does it take you to know what normal is? So, you know, I, one of the things I love about these getting to know Dynatrace sessions is we get the opportunity to answer some of these questions. But I also love the fact that now in the chat, if you start if you start looking in the chat window, we've got other folks that are answering these questions for us, which is awesome. <laughs> um, so, you know, the whole idea here, the whole idea with uh, Dynatrace is that that baselining is designed to be automated 
And, and so, you know, out of the box, there's nothing you need to do, nothing you need to tune. It's going to start generating these baselines. Now, uh, a couple of us have posted uh, some links to our documentation around how the multidimensional baselining actually works. There is in our documentation some very good illustrations and examples as to how this baselining works. But remember, with almost all of this, there are ways that if the way in which we're doing our automatic baselining is not to how you want things to be evaluated, you can go in and tweak our anomaly detection rules. So you can actually go in and modify in many cases how that baselining happens and how it's going to be executed. And if you want to have, you know, more hard, you know, specific thresholds that are driving different sort of uh, events within Dynatrace, you can always go in and create custom thresholds around any of the metrics that we're capturing. So, you know, great question. Thank you for that. You know, I, I would go in and read some of that. Uh, here's a question from, um, you know, um, Lernera. I'm going to hopefully I pronounce that correct. Uh, is there a feature to export data from the multidimensional analysis view? That's SmartScape topology. So uh, the simple answer is, yeah, there is. It exists now. Uh, it is our topology API. So if you're using Dynatrace, all you have to do is generate an API token. Once you've got that API token, you can go into our API. And actually, Stephen, let's just use that as a moment. Do you mind actually going into, if you go to the right-hand side of the screen, actually, into the little person icon in the upper right corner, and here you can see the Dynatrace API. So you see that there's a couple of different versions of our API, plus there's a configuration API. This is the great thing about Dynatrace is that it is very uh, programmatic friendly from the standpoint of if there are things that you want to pull out of Dynatrace, that environment API allows you to do that very easily. So you just simply grab yourself like a personal access token. You go into that API, select the API that you want, and in this case, we would be talking about the actual topology API, and you could pull out then that information that we were just talking about in terms of what's going into that SmartScape. So that's that's effectively how you do that. So a great question. Thank you very much for that. Um, actually, you know what, Stephen, now that we've shown people where to go to get the API information and how to use it, uh, let's go back to that problem card for a second, because... Uh, I, I love talking about this. Great comment here, Benjamin. Yeah, absolutely. It does cut down dramatically on the amount of time. It, as a matter of fact, let's go back into that um, uh, visual resolution uh, playback or path, I should say. I, I yeah. want to stop here for a moment because uh, somebody on my team, uh, Jason Bordelotti, he he describes this, that what Dynatrace does during a problem is it's effectively creating a virtual automated whiteboard of the problem. Because if you're in a war room type scenario, you've got a problem and everybody's on a call or everybody's in the conference room, somebody at some point picks up that, uh, you know, that Sharpie or that um, uh, erasable marker, I should say, don't use a Sharpie on an erasable marker. <laughs> um, they, they pick up, they pick up that erasable marker and they go up to the whiteboard and they start drawing out how everything is related and connected to each other. Dynatrace just does this for you automatically with this view. But also what this does is this just sort of shows you the way that things could be. Because rather than getting onto a war room and everyone's got their own siloed tools, um, your database team has their own monitoring tools, your OS, you know, like your infrastructure team's got their own tools, your web team has their own tools, your, you know, the application people have their own tools and in this particular case you know this scenario that steven walked us through there was 66 ongoing events and 13 different components every single one of those tools would likely have been lit up red but none of them would have been able to tell you the root cause of the issue as steven mentioned they're sh mostly showing you the symptoms of the issue because Dynatrace is looking at things in a much more holistic fashion, it knows that this check destination service is actually the root cause of the problem. But in a traditional sort of monitoring world, what happens is, you know, everything gets lit up red 
and nobody can figure out what the problem is because they're com your monitoring systems are completely unaware of each other. What you're using to monitor your OS is a very different than what you're using to monitor your database. What you're using to monitor your, uh, you know, from an external perspective is probably very different than what you're using to monitor your applications. And what you're using to monitor your logs is probably completely different from everything else as well. So because they're all unrelated, they, they have no knowledge of the data coming from each other. And thus they can't get to that answer. And that's what Dynatrace does here. And that's what Stephen pointed out so eloquently is that, you know, this visual resolution path shows us how Dynatrace connects all the dots and gets to the answers that you need. It's a great job, Stephen. So, Stephen, keep keep going with the demo. I, I'm sorry. I just sort of jumped in there and digressed for a bit. No, I, I love the extra context. And actually, that, that's a great segue um, because you mentioned, you know, Traditionally, each each group has their own tool. They need to do, you know, their proactive analysis and everything else, um, and and they kind of bring that tool to the fore uh, in in the war room, and everyone's sitting there with their own version of the data. Um, but with Dynatrace, not only do we have the ability to do this root cause analysis, but we have a lot of rich data that everyone can still use to to be proactive or to look at a specific end user uh, impact. So. What I want to do now is kind of drill into those those different um, you know verticals of data sets that Jonesy was kind of mentioning, just to kind of explain how all that data feeds into what becomes the problem detection root cause here. So we're going to kind of start on the left hand side of the problem card, where we have our our business impact analysis, and we see that we have a certain number of users affected um, by this problem. And I, I want to show one of now one of my um, kind of favorite views within Dynatrace, which is the application view. So this is an out of the box dashboard that gives us a high level view of the performance of our applications. And this this is so great because it's ultimately what we care about, right? We care about our users. We care about their performance. We care about you know where they are in the world, their customer satisfaction ratings, which we, we track automatically via um, AppDex. And also we can track some of their behavior and look at things like entry and exit actions and where they're leaving the site and what are their conversion goals and how our performance and error rates and uh, geographic locations are, are affecting those server goals and, and even, or excuse me, conversion goals. Um, and even things, you know, like what version of, of a browser they're using that, that impacts those. And that's all available in, in this dashboard. Um, but what's really powerful here is when we start to get into the session analysis. Um, so if we do have to go look at you know individual users and what their performance is and and the the data sets that are ultimately driving everything we see there, um, we can actually go in and see from the end user's browser. And I, I want to pull up two particular features here. Um, we're going to look a little bit at session replay, and session replay is this really great feature that allows us to actually kind of see through the eyes of the user. And the other thing I want to talk about is user tagging. So within Dynatrace, we have the ability to configure. Uh, a, a, a user tag that we can pull from a variety of places, whether it's uh, a user's, you know, presented back to them as part of a CSS tag or something that's that's passed as a header, we can actually put that and associate it with the session. And so when we have a user who calls in and actually says, I've got this problem at this time, and I don't know how I got to what step, we can go look that user up, go look at their session, actually see what they did. So here I'm gonna walk through this session with, with Hainer and kind of see what he did here. And we'll actually see all the different steps. And we'll actually uh, also see we've got some additional data pulled in here. So at the top of this session, not only are we going to see details about the performance of each page, we're actually going to pull in what we call session properties, where we can configure things like loyalty status, cart amounts. Um, in this case, the sample application is a travel application, where they were searching for. And we can use this later on for reporting that we can actually give to our product owners to get more insight into how the application is being used and how we're driving business goals, all derived from our observability data. OK, so, so hold on a second. Yeah, wait, sorry. Wait, 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 before, yeah, no, 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 no. This is, this is why I love doing these, because we get to, it's more of a conversation. So yeah. uh, before, before you get it too far in here, let's just stop for a minute and just let what Steven said sink in. Most people that use applications, they're not technologists. They're just regular people. They're business people. They know how to do a business function. You can imagine somebody at an insurance company who processes uh, claims, as an example. They use a web-based interface. They're working with their whatever that application is. They're entering in information in that form, processing that claim, and then something stops working. What do they know about it not working? They, they don't. They're, 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 they're a business person right? They don't know anything about technology. So now they've got a problem. It's not working. 
And what do they do? They call the help desk, right? Now the help desk is probably going to start having an anecdotal conversation with this non-technical business user. And it's going to start off something like, so what's wrong? Well, it's not working. Hmm. That's really descriptive and helpful. Thank you so much. And you get this back and forth and eventually you kind of get an idea as to, you know, something's going on wrong. Dynatrace eliminates that type of conversation, that anecdotal back and forth between a non-technical business user and, you know, some technical people trying to uncover the problem. All you have to do, as, as Stephen's showing us here, is you look up that user session. You can see exactly what they did during that user session. Okay, keep going, Stephen. Keep going. Because you, you're going to wow <laughs> so, people. You're going to really wow people, I think, with this. So as, as Jonesy was saying, you know, we, we have an anecdotal conversation, and we're kind of trying to infer what happened and you know what they clicked on or what didn't load right or what aired out. And maybe they saw this thing or maybe they typed something wrong. They don't really know. Um, with Dynatrace, we can leverage session replay and really user monitoring to understand in really great detail what the user did, what they were trying to do, and we're actually automatically going to flag when they had a problem, so this low page problem. And now I'm just going to sit back here and, and let the mouse uh, move around as we're, we're replicating the user's movements and seeing where they entered data into fields and seeing how the response time was and seeing how images rendered and really being able to see through the eyes of the user, where did you click on? Where did you go? What did it look like when you got there? And if you saw any errors. So I'm, I'm going to let this play out. And uh, we'll see here we're actually masking sensitive data. That's a, a key point there. Um, and let's while session this play is going out. through, so, it's, it's yeah. one of those things, Stephen, while this is going through, it's almost like, OK, we should be showing our hands up in the video. So like, oh, you know, yeah, yeah. Sorry. That's, <laughs> not, that's not us actually driving that. It's just like, you know, that playback, is it actually playing back? <laughs> Um, so we can see through the eyes of the users and, and, and see what they did and be able to have a much more targeted conversation to resolve things more quickly and on, on the first call. We don't have to escalate. Um, in addition to that, we have really, really great de in detail about each step in the process. So up here, I showed you know, what this looked like for the user. Let's take a look at what that looked like under the covers. So if I go down here, I see each step in, in the user's transaction, whether it was a page load, a page change, or an XHR action. And within each of these, I'm actually tracking, do I have conversion goals? Were there any errors with this? What was my aptX score for the individual page? So in this case, the first page was, was tolerable. Um, but let's figure out why this was tolerable, tolerable and the rest were a satisfying experience for the user. And so I've got some really great data here on key milestone metrics for the page load. I see time to first byte time to DOM interactive, my speed index, uh, load event complete, largest contentful paint, and all those are the key metrics that, that I want to know about the health of my page to dial in. But that's just kind of the surface. We can actually get into even more detail and see how it's loaded for, for the user on, on every piece of this page. We can see what the XHR requests were that went into the page, resources that were loaded, anything that failed, any errors that came up, if we have non-optimized images, uncompressed text resources. So right here, we're recording all this really, really minute detail to be able to see what affected this end user's experience. So not only are we baselining the performance to be able to find when there's a problem, but we're capturing really rich detail that I can get back to my UI team to say, hey, look, these resources aren't loading correctly. You've got opportunities to optimize images and compress them here. You're having error just loading this resource that's internal to us or a third party resource and see this for every part of the page. Now, what's really special here is this piece here where I say I've got 37 traces. And one of the really special things about Dynatrace as a whole is that we're actually going to have our, our tracing, which we, we call pure paths or, or distributed traces. That tracing actually starts at the user's browser. So we're actually able to trace from the user's browser through the web server and down through our service stack, down to our databases and infrastructure to be able to see every point that our trace went to and for every transaction in the system. So I want to drill into one of these specifically. So on my XHR requests, I can actually view the trace. So if I've if I've got all of my resources loading well, and I can see that all my op images are optimized, I can actually go and see where else I've got opportunities to improve my end user performance by looking at the pure path for this exact user. And so when we talk about the smartscape, we talk about visual resolution path, this is a lot of the data that's driving because we're understanding these relationships 
relationships for the individual transactions and then the applications as a whole and the, all the components that are driving it. So here I'm coming into my web server and I'm going down through multiple service layers all the way down to where my queries are. And I can see the individual queries that were run to service this page request for this user because we're not sampling. That's another really key aspect of Anitrace. We're not sampling, we're getting every transaction. So not only are we able to say when we've got a problem, what the root cause is, what component is failing, but we've got exceptionally detailed data to give back to the owner of that part of the process to fix it. And also to make proactive improvements if we're looking to make performance gains as a part of a, a um, continuous improvement process in our application lifecycle. So here I've gone from the application server down to the database and I can see that query, I can see timing. Um, the, on my Tomcat layer, I can actually see you know, what other components I'm calling. I can see down to the code level detail, which modules are taking the most time within my application to process this information. So just, I wanna pause here and, and just and talk about the fact that you know, we, we've got this automatic problem detection for a problem that affected 847 users and automatically said we had a problem with our, our check destination service. And what's driving that is all of this exceptionally fine-grained detail we have at the end user level to see exactly how the page loaded, and then all of the tracing we have behind that to see where we are in the code, what we're spending time on, are we spending time on garbage collection, spending time in a particular thread? Is it is it a certain code module that's slowing us down? Or we can actually see now here the individual process as well. So I've I've gone into the find location service. I only, not only know that service, I know which instance of that service is actually hosting it. And I can drill into that process and I can see the host level detail as well. So again, this is full stack. This is everything in one place. And I have my JVM details and my code details and my browser loading details and my SQL details and my hardware details in, in one place. And it's all being analyzed for me to surface that root cause so we can do things much more quickly everywhere, not just in, in the war room scenario, but when we're doing continuous improvement or we have the end user on the phone and we can resolve these issues more quickly and get back to building better features for our users. Uh, you, you know, like that, Stephen, honestly, it's like a drop mic moment, right? Like you, you, you just went through that. I know, I'm 20 honestly. minutes early. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Like, all right, let, let, let's let's peel back this onion a little bit, okay? Um, there is a tremendous, like, if you're talking about things in an observability context, so let's look at it from the point of view of that Google SRE type mentality, right? Um, observability is all about metrics. It's about logs. It's about traces. All right, so we just showed you everything around how Dynatrace from a metric standpoint um, will automatically baseline those metrics. It will use it in the problem uh, analysis. We just showed you the tracing capability and how that Dynatrace AI, um, you know, will allow you to drill down into these traces and understand things in context. That, you know, context in terms of, uh, the relationships between all of these different interrelated entities is killer. And then the log piece of it. So let's 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 take it to the next step, right, Stephen? So let, let's go over and have a look at the logs right now. So once we go into the logs here, and I, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna direct you for a second because I know that this is super powerful. Most developers are relying on logs right i think it's it's a very safe to say that in the industry uh you know logging is you know just a critical component of observability and seems to be the go-to place for every you know in initially when somebody has a problem here's the challenge with that okay and here's here's where i'm super concerned about it as an industry when there's a problem you take your best and brightest human capital. You take the people that are the smartest, that know how the application works inside and out, backwards and forwards, and you have them start sifting through log files looking for a needle in a haystack, right? That is, from our perspective, a tremendously wasteful um, uh, use of human capital, right? Because you're taking your best and brightest, the people who should be working on new code, innovation, creating new things, and now you've got them sifting through log files trying to find out what's going wrong, right? That That is just immensely wasteful. 
with Dynatrace, the whole Davis AI is automatically giving us indications as to where the problems are. So you don't take those really expensive humans and have them sifting through the, you know, th sifting through uh, the haystack, you know, looking for that needle. Now, here is an example. And do this, Stephen. Go up into the filter part at the top. And let's filter by log source. So just type in log.source. Log there you go. Now choose the, let's go and choose, say, like the hipster shop prod front end. Be like the fourth or fifth item down. Just that staging front end or the prod front end. Let's go with the prod front there end. There we go. Right there. Okay. So what we've done is we've we've gone in and we're looking at a log down. Now in this log, we're going to open up one of those first two log entries. And we're going to scroll into this. Now you can see the message here. Okay. The message is it's given us like currency, it's given us a Dynatrace span ID, trace ID, trace ID. What's that all about? So what's happening is Dynatrace, our agent, has the ability for you to take advantage of something called a W3C trace ID. What happens is that we will actually write out a identifier within the actual log that allows us to basically go from this log line to a trace. But before we do that, notice that before we click on that view trace button, you can see all of these entities below. You can see the source entity, the host entity. I know that this log was generated from this container group instance. It was running off of this namespace. It was running off of this cluster. It was running off that specific host. At any point in time, since those things are all blue, that means there's a link. So I can go from the log to my topological context of what was involved in generating that particular log. And if I need to, I can click on that view trace and go ahead and click on the view trace now. Where do we go? We're back in that pure path view that we were looking at before. So we're going immediately from the logs to the traces. So what does this effectively allow us to do? I could be looking at an end user session. I could be looking at the pure path for that end user. I can see what's getting written out into the log or vice versa. I could be in a log. And if I need to see who is the end user that was doing something that generated that log, it's just as easy to reverse. To our knowledge, there's not a lot in the industry that allows a developer to navigate back and forth, up and down, through an application in this fashion. And then to have an AI engine that's analyzing all of this data for you to actually provide you answers. So I, I, again, I'm sorry, Stephen, I took, I took a little bit of control there, but I just, I, I'm so, I am so excited about what this does for people that we just had to mention. So I'm going to take a pause there for a moment and, and let you uh, let you get back at it. Well, I'm, I'm glad you took over there because, you know, as we mentioned at the, at the top, we release every two weeks. And I, I did see this is one of the, the newer features that we have is, is having the traces in the logs. I mean, I'm, I'm pretty excited about it. Um, and I'm, I'm glad you, you walked me through a little bit. I, I learned a little bit there. Um, so that's that's really, really cool that we, we have that. And, and just as an example of the things that we're doing all the time, not just to bring in more data, but to improve our ability to use it so that we can have, you know, not not just not just doing the MTTR and the MTT talked about, but giving people the data they need to be able and the ability to navigate that data in a way that's efficient so they can build better systems. All right, that that's that's really what we're about here. All right. Next lined up. So you mentioned the metric explorer. Do you want to walk through that a little bit? Yeah, let's do that. Let, let's actually walk through an example. You know, I don't. We haven't done that much in many of the getting to know Dynatrace sessions, but let's let's walk through the Metric Explorer. Go go ahead. Let's let's do that. Sure. So here we're we're looking at the Metric Explorer. So this is available from our left hand menu here um, under Metrics in our Observe and Explore section. So this is all the metrics that we're capturing from the entire environment. Um, so we can see here the the number that I can actually go through, and. Here I'm looking at um, AppDex score. We saw that earlier in the end user session. And where we're looking at AppDex, we're automatically calculating 
what the user satisfaction level is on a, a scale from zero to one. So we can kind of look at, at everything on an even playing field and see if the users are happy or not. That's what that metric is. But we can see that this isn't just my score across my environment. I've also got a few different aggregations happening here. In this case, it's average. And I've also got dimensions. So I've got this dimensions across user action and user type. And I've got other transformations I can set to the data as well. So when we look at the metrics in the metric explorer, what you're usually seeing is a, is a high level view of the aggregate metric. You can unpack that in a lot of ways by having dimensions there. And so when we when we say there's you know 2,000 metrics here, there's a lot more than that. We can start start unpacking the, the dimensionality, and that's it's an important thing to note because a lot of us when we think about a graph, it's hard to think about anything beyond two or maybe three dimensions if you put something on the right side of the y-axis. Um, but the dimensionality of our metrics is, is very, very high because we have, again, a lot of that detail as we showed with the end user monitoring uh, as well as the traces. We have all these things like session properties and we have all this information about our different applications and about our different infrastructures. So we can split this data and look at it both at an aggregate level, which is very useful for dashboarding, and we can do it by the splits that are there and the dimensions so we can really get in and do very, very rich analysis. And we can add it to a dashboard really quickly as well. So if we go into create chart, so here's my chart here. Uh, and I can take an option here to split by a number of things. We'll split by user action type. And I'll click run query again. And we'll see that I've got these different action types here um, being split out by their aptX score. Um, could have chose a better metric there. <laughs> we can add another metric, though. So no, I can, no, no. I can well, now make, yeah, go ahead. I, I know. I was just going to go back. Now, that, that's 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 perfectly fine. Let's just stop there for a second, and actually, let's talk a little bit about how easy it is to change things like the you know the visualization. For example, some metrics, you know, okay, uh, a chart may not be the appropriate visualization for it, right? So if we change the visualization from a chart to um, uh, say like a you know. Uh, actually, no, no. Scroll up to the visualizations just above. Oh, there we go. Yep. Right there. Yeah, that's what we want. Uh, you know, doing like a pie chart or a top list as an example. You know, this is a perfect, you know, this type of metric probably would be better represented, not as a chart, but as one of these lists. Uh, everything from a table to, um, you know, to a pie chart, uh, to a top list sort of view. There's all sorts of different ways that you could display this. And we've added now just all these great capabilities over here to define thresholds, uh, coloring uh, that could be, uh, you know, driving what colors show up on the dashboards based upon these thresholds here. So there's all sorts of different visualization capabilities that are available to you. Yeah. And we can also do this um, via JavaScript code. So we, we can build it in here manually, um, but we can also do this as JavaScript code, which is really nice because um, we can then export these metric calculations to other dashboards you want to use and actually across environments. Um, and I don't think I have the link in front of me, but um, one thing I want to mention is, is our BizOps configurator, which is a really great way that people have pre-built metrics and pre-built dashboards um, mm -hmm. that bring in a lot of these metrics for common scenarios um, or, or common third-party applications. And you can actually use the BizOps configurator, point it at your tenant, and configure it right there to put the data in, see what it looks like, and bring that JSON back down into your environment and have a, a basically pre-built dashboard with everything you need for common scenarios. Very cool. Very so cool, we've man. got 10 minutes left. If there are other questions, folks, please feel free to ask those questions while we still got a few more minutes uh, left in the session. You know what? Um, let's actually show uh, some folks um, some of the new capabilities that actually just came out. Go into the left nav and uh, a couple things that sort of jumped out for me that I hadn't seen before. If we scroll to the bottom, there is a new option there for system notifications. So if we scroll down there, yeah, system notifications. Oh. So this is, again, sort of brand new. Uh, the system notifications, basically, if there are, you know, in the past, what would happen is in Dynatrace, there would be these banners that would show up along the top, right? There'd be like a yellow banner or a red banner, you know, depending upon what the notification was. And uh, the feedback that we got from our customers is that um, you know, sometimes those types of banners get in the way. So they would have 
they would prefer to have a central point to go to in Dynatrace to get that system notification type information, hence why we have this new screen. So one thing I'll mention is that this is a perfect example of how we take feedback from you, uh, the end user of Dynatrace, and we will incorporate that in, you know, into how Dynatrace gets presented back to you. Uh, you can create what's called an RFE or request for enhancement. It's done on the Dynatrace community. So feel free. Uh, if you've got suggestions in terms of things that we could be doing better, we're all ears. We want to know about it. So this system notifications is a perfect example of that. And if we go back to the left nav, there's something else that showed up there I hadn't seen before. Uh, just scroll up a little bit on the left nav. There you go. In the cloud automation orchestration projects showed up this week hadn't seen it before but dynatrace we mentioned that dynatrace could be used as i don't know if we mentioned this let's mention it um, yeah i don't think we did mention it yeah i don't think we talked about dynatrace as a quality gate so what do we mean by a quality gate um you know, a quality gate ultimately is using Dynatrace uh, and you can define a set of rules as to what constitutes good behavior or poor behavior. And you can use Dynatrace in the context of your CI CD pipeline. And what will happen then is Dynatrace can um, evaluate your build. And if it's a good build, we'll let it through. If it's a bad build, we'll say, nope bad build and push it back. So you can use Dynatrace to actually sit in between your different build stages. And this, what it does is it hardens your pipeline. It allows you to make sure that only good code, good builds, high performing builds get pushed through. Bad builds get pushed back. But then Dynatrace provides you a whole set of tools to tell you why it was bad, and what went bad about it. Exactly. And and this is what we were talking about a little bit earlier, where Dynatrace isn't just about getting the MTTI on, on those, you know, the SEV ones in production. It's really about improving the entire application lifecycle in a data-driven way. And doing that with things like quality gates is, is really key because as Jonesy mentioned, it's not just about did you pass or fail the, the QA test or the staging test? It's about giving that immediate feedback to the people who own the application or own the configuration change or own the database where you, you know, added a new index to give the performance information about what happened and why and to be able to very quickly make changes. And as Jonesy said, harden your pipeline, but also you have a faster feature velocity because you can fix these things that come up in a very rapid way because you have detailed information at every stage of your application lifecycle. Awesome. Very cool. So, hey, look, folks, uh, we're we're coming up close to the end of the session. If there are any last questions, feel free to blast them out there. We'll, we'll you know, we'll wait a minute or two to see if there's any final questions. Uh, but this, you know, as again, just, you know, to illustrate what we've been talking about, we're constantly releasing new functionality, new capabilities out into the platform. Every two weeks, there's new functionality. This is a perfect example of that. Um, so, you know, you're always going to see something new and exciting coming from us. Uh, and and that is driven based upon, you know, your feedback. So, you know, those RFEs are super important to us. Uh, Steven, it looks like you got a, a mobile dashboard yeah, up as, here. Did as you want to talk have, about that real quick? I, I did. As long as we have a few minutes, you know, I, I kind of wanted to talk yeah, about mobile support. So, you know, we, we talked about web support and we how we're capturing things in the browser. Um, and we also support that for mobile applications for both iOS and Android devices. We're able to give you that same level of tracing from the end user device all the way through to the back end. And actually, in, in this particular example, this is configured to actually look at mobile device calling through um, a, a cloud layer back to an on-prem mainframe. And so we're able to trace that all the way through and provide information here. And what's pretty neat about this is we also have crash analysis. Um, and with the crash analysis, we're also going to be looking at crashes and error by version. Um, so you can kind of see, you know, not only what, what usage is like by different versions around the world, but what crashes and errors are like. So you can get a sense of whether or not, you know, are user complaints coming in because of an upgrade or do I have a problem I need to go fix? And again, here we have the same level of um, uh, aptX rating for that user. And 
broken down by you know what action they're doing on the phone at a given time, seeing what geographic regions around the world are having problems, um, and again errors and reported uh, errors and crashes reported by version. Um, so this is really powerful for our our uh, mobile developers as well as our our web developers and again, being able to have everyone collaborate around this same data set of, I have my end user information in context with my services and infrastructure being automatically analyzed to tell me where I've got bottlenecks and where I've got opportunities for improvement for every part of my, my touch points with my users and every part of my IT ecosystem for the entire application lifecycle. That's awesome. That's awesome. Hey, we got uh, we got a last minute question that threw that got thrown in there. Uh, how can we get the exact number of users uh, affected by a given problem? Yeah. So I'll go back to this. Um, so within this business impact analysis on the bottom card, um, we'll see up here affected users. So I have 847 users that were affected by this problem. You'll see this number down here it was 23.3 thousand. Or that. That means we had 23.3 thousand users that were in the system um, or 23.3 thousand transactions in the system during the duration of the problem. Only 847 were actually affected. So I, I know my volume on the application and then the fraction of that that was actually affected by the problem that occurred. And when, it, when we say affected, we're, we're looking at, again, those baselines and did the baselines for those users deviate. So I had 847 user sessions that had uh, uh, performance that was deviating from the baseline during the problem duration. That's awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Great, great. Yeah. So, you know, again, just doing that, that analysis for you to understand scope and scale and prioritization, right? Because it's not just about finding where the problems are and what we need to do to fix them. If we've got multiple problems, we've got to prioritize, right? And so Dynatrace is giving us the information to know the impact. Does it affect user, end users or not, right? Is, it a C, is CPU spiking? That's a problem. But if it's not materially Im impacting my end user performance, it's a lower priority. And am I affecting one user or a thousand users? <laughs> right. So, we, so Dynatrace gives us the information we need to prioritize when we've got high volume events happening um, and get things resolved quickly in the most efficient way for the for our organizations. So we got one last question here, and, and and you know this is a great question, which is you know what are the best tools to easily connect to the Dynatrace API? Uh, for flexible reporting and, and exports. Well, first off, actually, uh, while I'm talking here for a moment, Stephen, can you just go bring up a chart, bring up any chart, you know, in a dashboard or something like that? So um, our APIs uh, can very easily be connected to things like Power BI. I got to say, we see a lot of people using things like Power BI as an example. Um, you know, if you wanted to use it with something like business objects, you could do that as well. One of the things I would suggest is go to something like GitHub, do a do a search on GitHub for like Dynatrace and Power BI or Dynatrace and say you want to export it into or import it into an Excel spreadsheet. Uh, you can do that. Or when you're looking in the data explorer like this at a chart, if you go into the dot, dot, dot in the upper right hand corner, this one. Yep. You can see here, you can export it directly to a CSV, right? So when you're looking at data inside the data explorer, if you want to actually have that as, you know, something that you could throw out into a spreadsheet, just, you can simply just grab it and export it to a CSV just by clicking on that button. So folks, hey, listen, it's now at the top of the hour. I really appreciate all of the feedback that you guys provide us. Stephen, you have done a tremendous job today with this demonstration. Thank you so much. Dude, you've got a uh, you got a great radio voice too, man. <laughs> you give me a win for my money. So I really appreciate you having on here and I'm walking through this demo. Folks, these sessions are only as good as the questions that you guys provide. And thank you so much today for all of those great questions. Um, we'll be back to you for another session of getting to know Dynatrace uh, in August. And uh, with that, I wish everyone a you know happy couple of weeks, happy summer. I'm taking a little bit of vacation myself. I uh, hope you get a chance to take some vacation and uh, enjoy it. Be safe. And we look forward to having you back here on another getting to know Dynatrace session. If you if this is your first exposure to Dynatrace, remember, you can always sign up for a free trial of Dynatrace as well. 
So you can just take it for a spin just by yourself. Uh, just go to Dynatrace.com, look for the free trial button in the upper right-hand part of the screen, take it for a spin. Again, Stephen, thank you so much. Great demonstration, and folks. Thank you. So long, everyone. We'll see you on the next session of Getting to Know Dynatrace.